Geeks. Welcome to Season 3, Episode 6 of Geek.0. I'm Chris. And I'm Sean Michael. Uh, trying something new tonight. We finally figured out, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, how to video record ourselves again. Sean's going to be getting getting to do a little video editing to get this up on YouTube as well as on iTunes and whatever podcast player you may use. Uh, so you're going to have to look at our ugly mugs. Um, Sean in the geek cave and me in front of the uh, geek bookcase. Uh, that's about all the geek I get. <laughs> busy man. Busy man. Um, but uh, so it's going to it's going to be interesting to try and be aware of the webcam. Yeah, tonight, indeed. Instead of, you know, like having to look back at it and picking my nose and like taking my ear earpiece out and like scratching the inside of my ear and you know that kind of stuff yeah i can't run away uh, from the camera to do stuff anymore during recordings i like have to be right? present yeah so. <laughs> so hopefully it'll improve the quality of the show because we won't be getting up to go you know oh i you know need to blow my nose or something, right. <laughs> something along those lines um so we're gonna talk about five things tonight uh, we may move into a sixth i don't know um we're gonna start out uh with uber we're finally gonna finally gonna talk about Uber after everything that's gone on with Uber. Uh, Microsoft came out with a Surface laptop um, with some interesting specs on it. Uh, Elon Musk wants to give us the internet for a competitive price. <laughs> um, the Dark Tower trailer has finally dropped. Yes. Uh, and honestly, in my opinion, slightly more importantly, uh, the Defenders trailer. <laughs> oh, dropped. most definitely more important. Uh, no, no Microsoft offense, Dark Tower. Uh, I have not started reading it yet, I, I, but I am going to. Um, but, you know, let's let's kick off with, I guess, with Uber. And yeah, what did they what have they done wrong this week? <laughs> I guess uh, it, it seems like every week. Maybe every four to five days. So Uber is having a problem with with something. It seems like over the course of the last uh, three months, three to four months, Uber has yeah. really, really stepped in some uh, a lot of duty and tracked it all over their house and everyone else's. Um, yeah. I've actually I opted for a while. I opted not even to think or I, not think, but I opted not to use it as a topic. Because I know that when uh, major companies, uh, well, we, I mean, come on, we've seen Silicon Valley. So when these companies start up like this, they get incredibly massive valuations that far exceed what they could actually maintain and things like right. that. You end up having these little hiccups and hurdles. You have personality, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to say disorders, but you have some personality issues that people have to overcome. Complex. Yeah, complexes. And you've got some some operational things. And it's... Let's face it, when you become overnight almost a, a massive uh, company like Uber, yeah. it's not always you know, due to just blood, sweat, and tears and genuine, legitimate hard work. And so right. I kind of took everything with a grain of salt and saw where it, thought we would wait until we saw how things go. But there's just so many things now that have come up. Uh, Uber, if you want to talk about PR nightmare, uh, they are the kings of it. And uh, yeah. um and it starts with Travis Kalanick. Uh, so I think everything started off going downhill when a report broke that uh, a video was released of Travis Kalanick uh, in a car, in an Uber, taking an Uber, okay? Um, he had two women in the back seat. Uh, uh, everything you'd see in a stereotypical CEO playboy uh, so it like situation. HBO, it was HBO Taxi Cab Confessions. Straight up. So he's got like two. 1997 all yes. over the place. He's got a woman on each side flanking him. Uh, he's partying it up. He's taking an Uber. He's playing big man. And he gets dropped off someplace. And he ushers the girls out of the car. And as he goes to pay, the driver very politely just at, you know tells him, I wanted to ask you something. And he starts asking him about changes they've made in the company that cost him a lot of money. Because this guy's invested mm -hmm. with the company. And he's lost $900,000, I think it was. So he's got a legit reason to be ticked. And Kalana goes off on the guy. 
and tells him, I'm so, you know, basically tells him that it's uh, sick that he has to deal with people who won't accept responsibility for their own actions. And they made changes that they need to make to be competitive. And um, that uh, that's how it goes down. And, and it, the whole tone of it, and I don't want to misrepresent the conversation. Um, you can read the transcript online, but it was way disrespectful. To the driver. Right. And it was basically an F you, you pee on, uh, you know what I mean? If you don't like it, find a better job, you know, toss mm-hmm. money at the guy. And it was terrible. It was wow. literally the definition of a bro uh, exerting his, you know, his uh, bro personality. And um, <laughs> he uh, <laughs> then after this breaks, uh, then um, Uber gets sued by Google. Um, and Google claims that uh, um, Anthony Lewandowski, uh, who came to Uber to develop their systems for their autonomous driving from yep. Waymo, from Google's AI division for autonomous vehicles. And Google claims that he left with, uh, I think it was 14,000. It was either 14 or 41. It doesn't matter. It's in the thousands of pages of internal documentation on the, the development. proprietary information. Yeah, developing their yep. LiDAR systems. And... Yeah. Uh, at first, you know, everybody was like, uh, the tech media was kind of torn. And then the kind of the general swing was, well, maybe Uber's or Google is just a little overreaching a little bit here because they want to find out exactly what, and this is the easy way to do it is to bring a lawsuit, what he Mm -hmm. brought with him or whatever. Um, but then just last week, uh, out of the blue, uh, Lewandowski had to, uh, he tried to plead the fifth in order to avoid saying anything that would incriminate him and potentially put Uber's endeavors behind. And a judge ruled that he can't do that. The judge ruled that he can't stop Uber from presenting any information that they need for a good defense. So basically this is one of those few situations where the legal system actually works because the judge says, look, you can't prevent the company from presenting any information and they're required by the letter of the law to mount a proper defense, meaning if they don't want to go down, they must yeah. provide everything necessary um, to show that they didn't. And it's not looking good because the general consensus is uh, there's some stuff. So, well, you would think. You would think. Um, and then it turns out uh, Uber got is in deep, uh, deep uh, hot water with a number of countries because they were using a secret app called Grayball. That allowed them to continue using their services in countries that were had been outlawed. This Grayball app actually tracked police and federal officials in these nations, and it would allow them to identify them and then prevent drivers from you know picking up any of these in plain clothes or things like that to continue their operations outside the law. Okay, in these countries, violating international law in these countries. Okay, so they could continue to make money, (laughs) but it gets better. Also, uh, several women brought forth, uh, it it was started by one brave woman who brought forth a sexual harassment suit saying that the uh, culture um, was an absolute bro culture, that she had been sexually harassed on numerous occasions and that it was an oppressive and offensive work environment. And then other women piped up to say the working environment here is is terrible. There's bullying. um, There's a lack of diversity. There's a total bro culture. It's a bunch of high fives and ass slapping and it's unacceptable. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And then... (laughs) Wait, hold on, wait and, for it. And then? And I, and I don't, I need to look up the story, but I'll just say a reporter. I don't remember if it was Washington Post or the New York Times, but a reporter did an article on how Uber has now set up a new system that offsets the payment for their drivers. So when you book an Uber, um, they, they used to have a, they used to have surge pricing and surge pricing mm-hmm. was like this system that told you like, if you're at the airport or places where it was yeah. busy, it was going to cost you more basically for the ride. It was give you an advance yeah, and it'd tell yeah. you what you're going to pay. Makes sense. They did away kind of with the surge pricing. They just hid it in the background. What they did was to keep drivers and customers from knowing how much of what you paid Uber got. They offset it so the driver doesn't get paid till far enough after the customer would have already left the car that they can't compare. And that way the driver could never, the customer could never see what the driver's actually making for what they're paying Uber, right? And that's super crappy. And um, 
of course, this reporter, uh, she started just doing just that. She started sitting in the car with Uber drivers when she took Ubers and asking if they would allow her to, uh, you know, see what they got from the, from, you know what I mean? The ride. And, um, it turns out it is different and, and it's not consistent on every ride. So Uber's claims of, you know, transparency and honesty in, you know, upfrontness with their drivers are total BS as well. So like, it just seems like they cannot catch a break. They're either stealing intellectual property from one of the largest companies on the planet to advance their own systems. They're violating the law in foreign countries. They are violating the, the human rights of women and minorities that work for their company. Um, (laughs) They're bullying people uh, who work there and they're, you know, uh, they're being not upfront with their drivers about what they actually are taking out of what uh, they charge. So, I mean, the entire thing is just, it's a it's a PR nightmare, and I'll, I'll tell you what uh, the fact that they're still up and operating at this point uh, just goes to show the uh, the talent of their PR team. Um, so is Lyft a publicly traded company yet? <laughs> you know, I don't know, but this is something <laughs> hilarious that you'll hear. So this uh, one of these issues popped off, and I believe it was the uh, it was the sexual harassment one. It's what spawned the hashtag Delete Uber um, yeah. movement on Twitter. And I, I, I don't remember the exact number, but I believe it was like 150,000 users uh, bailed, c- killed the service, deleted it off their phones and things like that. And this was just before South by Southwest. And of course, Lyft saw a surge in uh, a drastic usage. uptake in their usage in their bookings uh, during this period. And uh, a lot of writers were writing about some of the indie rideshare programs. I'll call them indie because they're not nationwide. Um, but Austin, Texas has a fantastic one. Um, that's just like Uber, but it only serves the Austin area and it's cleaner, it's nicer. And, um, that network during South by Southwest, they actually, their whole system went down because they got flooded with requests because people were like, screw Uber. And so now this, this company that's uh, doing this, uh, locally, they got an, they got, you know, inundated with, uh, uh, requests. And so they couldn't keep up. So their system was down for like four hours. They're doing things manually, um, you know, writing tickets and things like that. But I, uh, it's just not, not a good year. And here, uh, and here I'm in a town that can't, hasn't even gotten Uber yet. <laughs> and you're in a town that just got Uber mm-hmm. in what, December. Uh, right around uh, I November, believe, I believe. November, yeah. Like, yeah. Like a week after we needed an Uber. Yeah, and, exactly. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah. And so I, I, I'm, I'm just going to put it out there that personally, as, as, as an individual, uh, this view is my own. Um, I think Uber is a, uh, POS company right now. I think it's got bad management. Um, I know they are trying to turn things around. I know there are several powerful women um, who are trying to reinvent the company. Uh, Travis yeah. Kalanick has openly stated that he feels like he's an overgrown child. And he's actually, this is crap, folks. He's hired a personal advisor whose job is to make him not look like an, uh, an idiot. So this guy's job is to help teach him how to not be a freaking child. I, this is a CEO I, I, of a major company. I, I really wish that... Like, I would have seen that posting on LinkedIn because it's probably pretty well paid. <laughs> I and imagine it, it is. It's, it's, it's literally the lifeblood teach, of the company. Teach this, teach this dummy common sense. Yeah. How is, to not be a douchebag 101. I would love yeah. to teach that course. Well, I don't know if I'm qualified to teach that course. But, um, no, you're not, but I think I could probably <laughs> knock it out. <laughs> so <laughs> I could do 101, but 102 would be a Yeah, 102 would be a stretch. Be. So I just, <laughs> as, as an individual, I, I, if, Given the opportunity, I will not be taking Uber. Um, if Lyft was available in our area, um, I would do it. I drive my own car anyway, but on those nights, it would be nice to be able to go out and enjoy myself yeah. and not have to worry about getting home. I'll take local taxi instead or take Oof. a DD. Uh, it's not worth it. I won't support an organization that is doing at this point has done so much to offend and oppress so many people. Uh, when they get so their stuff to together, local taxi. I know, I know. They're nasty. But you know expensive. what? I'll make the sacrifice. Once Uber gets their crap together, um, right. we'll see if these female executives that are truly making some, you know, working hard to try to repair this company and the well, damage Kalonic's done. Um, we'll see. But right now, and while this won't necessarily affect everyone out there that's watching or listening, you know, we both live in Missouri 
Yeah. And they did pass a law recently to make it easier for ride sharing companies to exist in the state. Start with uh, someone. So hopefully, at the very least, at least hopefully Lyft will start showing up. Yeah, It'll that would be awesome. It'll probably be in Kansas City and St. Louis. KC too. first, S- yeah, STL's yeah. next. But yeah, it'll it'll slowly make its way here. Um, but I mean, I, I'd been taking Ubers when I was out on corporate things, you know, flying to the airport, taking Uber. Um, you know, I, I'm going to have to figure something else out now, it looks like. Um, but, uh, you know, Uber's making their moves. Hopefully Lyft is going to figure something out, you know. And Hashtag start getting... Uber sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag, hey, Lyft, please come to Joplin. <laughs> um, honestly, Springfield would be fine at this point. Right. Um, but Microsoft unveiled a new laptop. Um, was it today or yesterday? Yesterday. Yesterday. Uh, $1,000 laptop, correct? It's it's the jam. Yes. Um spec wise it's fine you know what i mean it's not it it ain't gonna melt anybody's faces it depends Uh, on how you look at it but the operating system has some interesting quirks to it yeah Uh, it seems like it's almost focused at now correct me if i'm wrong the the surface laptop is what we're talking about here yes indeed and it it has it has its own windows on it called windows s windows 10 s yes which you think they would have learned from windows rt or whatever it was that was legit rt it didn't actually carry the banner of windows 8 you know surface rt or whatever yeah it was it was it was, it, um, it had its own nomenclature so but i mean oh my gosh so give me the rundown on the tech specs on this thing okay so the idea here uh spec wise uh with we'll the talk about windows. surface laptop is uh, it offered in a core i5 and i7 Microsoft processor um and, and autoplay ads make me want to punch someone in the face i apologize for that folks um i'm trying to actually pull the 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 detailed specs up real quick um but it's offered i i, I went to this thing immediately yesterday and, and looked at ordering one and uh, there's configure, um, not available. So the core I five comes in a nine 99 price point and 12 99, and they are available for pre-order as of this morning. Um, nine 99 gives you 128 gig SSD, four gigs of Ram and Intel HD 620 um, uh, graphics. Um, and then the 12 99 is a 256 SSD, eight gigs of Ram and install Intel 620. Um, and then in the i7, uh, in the truly powerful version for 1599, you get a 256 gig SSD and eight gigs of Ram. And then at 2199 is the 512 and 16. So, yeah. uh, so where people are having the big, uh, issue here is that it does <laughs> run windows 10 S, um, which is and, a slimmed uh, version of windows yeah. 10. So it should be faster, theoretically. Um, and and it is. Uh, and they showed uh, oh. it a bit during the <laughs> keynote. They did. Uh, no, we don't know what the S stands for, but the the kind of assumption we're getting is that it's for students. Oh, I figured it was for Surface. Yeah, no, it's because uh, it's stripped. the whole has stripped. The whole point behind this was to was to make light of the fact that this was kind of geared towards college students. Um, Marketed after the MacBook Pro audience. Exactly. And yeah. so here's what we've got. And this comes at a really good time considering the MacBook Pro hasn't been updated legitimately. Okay. It I'm not talking years. about put a fancy touch bar on it, but literally inside specs and performance hasn't been updated in a long time and hasn't yeah. gotten a, a, uh, a, a respectable upgrade. And so, mm-hmm. um, I will tell you this, the keynote yesterday was a typical Microsoft keynote. Um, which is to say boring until, <laughs> until the surface laptop came out uh, or I should say yeah. until Panos Pene came out to do the end. Dear God, I wish I was a, a passionate about anything, uh, as that guy is about that. He's yeah. like the, if you took all the snoot away from Johnny Ives. Okay. Uh, and okay. made him less of an a-hole that would be <laughs> Panos Pene. So, and yes, I just said that. Um, That's fine. So, uh, so if you, if you, if you took those, he's an arrogant guy. He is, he's a prick. So if you took that stuff (laughs) off, I say like I've met him, but 
Like, he just comes he, off he as so self-righteous and oh. indulgent. Yes, yeah. it's the persona that he puts off. Chamfered but edges. If you guys have a chance, it's worth watching the segment where Panos Pene talks about this thing. It's pure poetry. Watching him describe and show off this thing, his passion about it, I mean, is absolutely amazing. And what's great is, during the keynote, he wanted everyone to see it, so he was showing it off and everything, right? But during the keynote, he looks out at the audience. He's like, I want you I want you guys to understand how incredibly luxurious this thing is. And he walks out and he looks across the crowd and he singles out this one black woman. It's fantastic. She's in a row of journalists and she has a MacBook Pro. And of yeah. course, he picks her and he just pushes it aside and sets it in front of her. And he goes, I just want you to try it. And he's like, tell me how you feel about it. And it's great. He walks away. He's not even five steps away. He turns around. And he's like, do you like it? You know, like, and she's like, I, I, well, I put my hand, <laughs> she's like, let me touch touched. it first. <laughs> so, um, visually, this thing is gorgeous. Uh, well, it's, it's laser, the, the, the keyboard is laser cut out of this amazing yeah. fabric. Um, the keyboard, uh, it looks like it feels fantastic. They watched uh-huh. them uh, typing on it. The screen is touch capacitive and and it does support the surface pen gorgeous awesome. and it does support the surface pen they should so have an active there, demo there's the step above the macbook just yeah. right there well just specs that. and touch screen and surface right. pen um but it doesn't have usb type c a couple of people were surprised about. yeah i'm a little shocked about that um and i'm kind of shocked that if they were going to release this at this price point the part that confuses me is windows 10s here's yes. why the idea behind Windows 10S, uh, this big announcement, is Microsoft is now going to start pushing back against Google in the education arena, okay? Their yeah, goal is books. to, that's a massive, massive market. But as the as the spouse of an educator who works yeah. in an environment that is a one-to-one environment with Chromebooks, um, uh, it's an amazing platform to be able to give kids access to computers. The problem yes. is it is incredibly limited, meaning you're yeah. bound to the Chrome OS and you're bound to whatever applications are available within Chrome OS. And you can't install software. You can't do those things because it's cloud-based. Right. So the idea behind Windows 10 S was to say, what if we could make a version of Windows um, that works within the cloud but doesn't sacrifice... Um, performance what if you could install apps what if it was well, almost a full version of windows some apps and uh a lot <laughs> a lot uh well it's, it it limit if i'm not mistaken does it not windows lock store you into, it locks you into edge and bing doesn't it well yeah but i expected that and i'll t- and i'll get to that in a second when it comes to specs um the uh the 10s uh 10s is slimmed down but yeah. it is uh when you take it, and I lost my train of thought there. I'm sorry. Mess me. No, it's all good. Oh, it's that they they wanted to design an operating system that was slim down, but still gave them the potential for power, right? Right. And you more could functionality, still run like an like an Adobe Suite or something right. like that on it. And then they it. announced that they're going to be pushing into the education market with laptops that are 189 dollars with Windows 10 S. So really? why in the world? So that. they're undercutting Chromebooks with a high yeah. performance system here that allows you to install apps, can run Minecraft and Minecraft education, which I've been yeah. testing and is fantastic. So this is a full platform that's cheaper than Chrome OS systems, okay, um, that's accessible. So why in the world, if you've got the hardware that's in the Surface laptop, is it not running full Windows 10? I mean, now, don't, I, don't I do believe pro. I read something that you can upgrade from S to 10 to full 10 for like 50 bucks. I would be half tempted to buy this sucker because it's a really, really nice laptop and see if I could just put 10 pro on it. So well, that, I didn't, I, I didn't I notice mean, that they offered uh, pro as a, as an option. Yeah, you can it's okay. right here on the verge as it runs windows 10 S the only apps that will be available from the windows store, unless you opt to upgrade to windows 10 pro. I'm worth it for 50 so, bucks for an upgrade. Yeah. So, Cause this thing well, is and if gorgeous. You already have, I believe if you already have a device license, you'll be able to, you take should that be able license. to just use that upgrade. You'll be able to use that license on, on this device and it won't cost anything. And since you brought up, uh, no USB type C, a lot of people are hitting on this thing going, the keynote mentions students, students, you know, Penos Pene says, yeah. this is the kind of laptop that you can give your student when they start and they'll have it at graduation. That's how powerful yeah, and functional like this is. a thousand dollar laptop. And well, everyone's going, 
Everyone's going, yeah, okay, only if your kid's rich. Let me tell you something. The Mac has been positioned as the ultimate laptop for students now for like seven years. Oh, and parents yeah, are breaking that. their necks and taking out loans to buy their kids stupid Macs. I get that. But as soon those as Microsoft parents, wants to do it. No, hold on. Okay. I think those parents are stupid too. I do too. <laughs> okay. Buy him a four hundred dollar Asus. You got your kid a laptop uh, and yep. a MacBook, and you want to yell at me? Be my guest. You <laughs> spent poorly. Yeah, for what there a student go. needs. Now, if your yeah. student is is a third year AV student, okay, doing yeah, video editing, different. or yeah, they're a that's musician, different. that's different. Yeah. Get them a get them a refurbished Lenovo off freaking Newegg. Save yeah. a couple hundred dollars and move them on down the road. Exactly. But if you just, if your kid wanted a status symbol and you're that uh, parent that uh, reinforced yeah. that uh, for yeah. them, then you're the douche. So yeah, it, ain't like, it ain't like buying Jordans anymore. Exactly right. <laughs> so a lot of the press hopped on this is like, okay, only the hoity toity, or I think uh, the register used the term well healed um, students would be the ones carrying these. And I'm like, okay, yeah, well, I here's. Was I would be more than happy to own this laptop for my own personal use for work oh, with Windows 10. Pro I want on. one. I would be all about it. And I'm it's probably going to talk to thin. my company about it. <laughs> so it's wicked. So look at this thing. It's wicked thin. It's the yep. thinnest uh, touchscreen ever developed. The yep. screen is gorgeous. And yep. it's fast. It's instant on, instant off. It's everything that we saw in the MacBook Air, but without being neutered power wise. So instead of the neutered, you know, uh, super restricted and nerfed specs you got with the MacBook Air, um, it's this has balls. You know, this is a powerful laptop for and being what it is. It comes in four colors. <laughs> Indeed. And the blue is pretty sexy. Actually, all I, the colors are nice. I like the burgundy. I think it's cool looking. Yeah, the burgundy is nice. I'm trying to find the term they use for this fabric because they talked about it, it a lot. It is uh, Alcantara. Yeah, Alcantara fabric. They watched, they yep. showed in the video, they showed how they lay the fabric over the keyboard. It's interesting to know every single one of these, the way it's actually done, the fabric is laid across the keyboard and then it's laser cut over the keys. Yep. So this it's is really laid. Cool. In, it, I mean, it's soup, the engineering and the work the craftsmanship that goes into this. And they made mention numerous times about the fact there's no seams. You won't find a single screw. You won't find yep. a single seam. Ooh, um, it weigh, and it weighs less than three pounds. Yeah, it's like 2.6 pounds. I mean, yeah. this is truly a sexy piece of hardware. If yep. anything, okay, for all the people who are like naysayers, like a $1,000 laptop from Microsoft. If anything, it's proving that Microsoft is getting far, far better at the hardware game. Yes. They're, they're just, and, there, and there's some other cool, like, integrated vapor chambers. Yes. Uh, to keep it cool. Did There's you see no the speakers? Speaker drills. Did you see the yeah, speakers? The yeah, they're integrated into the keyboard, so it vibrates. They use the, the fabric keyboard. as yeah, a, yeah. Act as, the, act as the speaker, right? That was as cool to me as when Apple's announcement about the way they built the new speaker in the new Apple Watch to push water out. Okay? Right, yeah. I yeah. was like, that is dope same thing here with the speakers i'm gonna I was start like, That's bugging. so cool i'm gonna start bugging my boss to just let me buy my own laptop and buy this laptop and run windows 10 i'm seriously Photoshop. contemplating this is my next laptop i it, it's cool yeah it's very cool 14 and a half hour battery life oh yeah that's the other thing is is the the ssd that's in it is integrated of oh. course um but it's obviously nvme and it's super fast mm -hmm. so this mm -hmm. thing rocks even a macbook pro um in in speed and performance so unless you go top end of course uh with the macbook pro so comparably right. priced in its in its this is a serious competitor this is a great is. little piece of hardware it's exciting Good okay. on hopefully you. this Hopefully this is going to push Apple to do something with the MacBook that's worth a crap. I'm telling you, man, 2017 is the year. Of, they're planning it's something September. big this year. I'm telling well, you. And I, I guess we'll just go into that because the, the rumor I'm hearing is that they're looking at coming out with their own version of the Google Home slash Amazon Echo. They're working. I I So this is from the things I've been reading over the Internet uh, over the past three, four months. Uh, I firmly believe that Apple is working on a very, very, very va revamped and fine-tuned version of Siri, a new AI. Yes, for They're a new have digital to, assistant. Siri sucks. Yeah, the, to, for an actual competent uh, uh, digital assistant. Yeah. I'm um, saying a new Max this year, 
And yeah. obviously, 10th, 10th anniversary iPhone, so it's going to be something major. When this thing comes out, I mean, people are going to be impressed. Oh, yeah. um, I'm not worried about the new iPhone. And that'll be an impressive piece of hardware. And new MacBooks. I really think this yeah. year they're going to wow everybody. And here's the deal. I think there's going to be things that we haven't thought about. I think this is the year Apple is going to announce yeah. their big project. Uh, I don't, excuse me, I don't know whether it's going to be uh, the car, okay? Because oh, people have now car. spotted it. People have now spotted it out in the wild and taken know. pictures. So Apple's not, Apple is not going to, Apple's not like Sony or Microsoft where they're going to show something off two years in advance. No, no, no. They'll, it'll be done by the time they reveal it. it. Yeah. And, and just cause, it, and having it just been out in the wild with, you know, the black, the maybe black it's just the first covering. time somebody was smart enough to catch it. Maybe they've been doing Could this be. for a while and we just haven't caught it. Could Google's be. been doing this yeah. for like eight years now. Google's been on the AI automate, you know, autonomous know. vehicle. So I just don't. I will be stunned if it's an autonomous vehicle from Apple. Oh subject. yeah, I will There's be too. No way. I will There's be no too. Way. I'm just saying there is some Skunk Works project from Apple. Okay, uh, it'll probably. Be I guarantee like Siri. Siri integrated into some car brand or some. No, I think it's going to be bigger than that. I think it's major. This is a this will be something yeah. that's a new game changer. It'll be it'll be iPhone. It'll be iPad. It'll be one of those. It'll be a so new it'll be something product that somebody segment already, from them. So it'll completely. be something that somebody already did. And yes, Microsoft and, then, and they've perfected it. Exactly. Don't think it, they invented it. Yep. Okay. Because <laughs> that's what Apple does. They don't do I anything know. new. They yeah. take stuff that's already out there and they go, how can we make this and better that, than anyone's why, ever done that's it? That's why I truly think it's going to be a home assistant updated version of siri that, that, that that's works on apple home point. yeah because that's it, it makes so much and, and i know that's mold. not earth shattering and world changing but it's like the one market they're absolutely totally not in or competitive in right now and they've been doing that's a lot true. of speaker they've been doing a lot of speaker development with the headphones yep. they bought beats they've had siri forever if they would just yeah figure out how to fix it and let it, you know, maybe here's an idea. Maybe let it work with third party apps like Spotify. <gasps> I mean, come on. I, I, know, I, I know that sounds crazy, but that's what, that's what home does. That's what echo does. You can't No, the Reich won't give up. I mean, Apple they, wouldn't give up control. <laughs> the Reich. And, well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> if, if they're not willing to give up, a little bit of control to where you can you don't have to use Apple Music and you don't have to use Apple Maps and all that. They they won't be comp if they get into the marketplace with Home and Echo, they will not be competitive. I agree because with it you. It won't work with the it won't work with what everything with the other things that people like to use. That's where though I think that a lot of people get Apple wrong. Apple just doesn't they give zero, you know, they don't care. If Apple has to integrate with other companies, if they have to open to other people, then they just won't do it. Apple will do it on their own if that's the case, always. Right. They've, they've, they've proven it over and over and over again. They'd rather build a a walled garden of perfection that they that's uh, designed around their hardware and then let it get better over time than in any way, shape, or form work with another company. And I'm fine with that, but I'm I, what I'm saying is allow me to say, "Hey Siri, skip to the next song." On Spotify. When I'm listening, when I'm listening to Spotify. Yeah. Not. I'm sorry, sir. I can't do that because you don't have Apple Music installed. If you'd like to reload Apple Music, you can go to the App Store. Yeah, I've heard that response more than once. Obviously, I mean, it just because you forget about it because you get used exactly. to using Echo at home or the Google Home at home, and you say, "Hey, skip to the next song," and it does it. And they and do it so well. Yeah. So, you know, if 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 Apple is willing to do that, I I would definitely look into getting something from them along those lines. But you know what they're probably not they going to do, do this year? Launch satellites into space? Launch satellites into space and give the world internet. Well, give is probably a little. <laughs> well, yeah, let's make available internet for the but entire world. Give might be mildly overselling it. Um, um but what we're talking about is Elon Musk uh, of Tesla fame, of SpaceX fame, of I'm going to take over your brain fame. Um, Elon Musk is working with the uh, the FCC, 
the United States Federal Communications Commission uh, to launch a worldwide satellite internet with low latency and gigabit speed by when? 2019. It's retarded, dude. So what's up, AT&T and Verizon and Cable One? What's up now? <laughs> what the beauty of this is, is while like, and oh, you just hit, you took it to my thunder. <laughs> the beauty of this is, is those greedy m- m- companies, uh, yeah. Comcast yeah. and Mediacom and uh, of course, uh, Cox and all the uh, Verizon and their stranglehold on just taking, uh, sucking every dime from their customers for speed. His plan is volume. Like, yep. and the projections, the projections are 30 billion in revenue by 2025. Uh-huh. Well, 30 billion. If you could provide gigabit service for a reasonable price, let's say 60, 70 bucks. Yeah. So what he's, what he's looking to do here is launch 4,425 satellites into a low earth orbit. Okay. This, which would be, you've got to see the picture. It's 715 dope. to 823 miles. So the current satellite network, HughesNet, that's out there, which, by the way, terrible. Sucks. The current have it. Sucks. Um, and they kind of have to because they live out in the country. They're at an altitude of 22,000 miles. It's way so, closer. So what's cool about that is that the, the low orbits would reduce latency. Big time. So and like the where, number where, of where, units. Yes. So, so where HughesNet's at 600 milliseconds of latency... SpaceX is talking 25 to 35 milliseconds of latency. That's so like almost fit, as fast as mine. Like a 12th. Like yeah, I average, 11, I average 8 to 11 milliseconds. So that's dope. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah that's I'm on fiber. Better. Yeah. Wow. So once, and this is a, let's see, space, this is what SpaceX told the FCC. Uh, once fully optimized through the final deployment, the system will be able to provide high bandwidth up to one gigabit per second per user, low latency broadband services for consumers and businesses in the U S and globally. So <laughs> wow. How, how, how could you not love that? Each satellite's going to have an aggregate download capacity of 17 to 23 gigabits per second. Oh my God. So they're planning to launch 800 satellites on the first, on the first wave. You know what makes me excited about this uh-huh. is this isn't Verizon or Mediacom. This isn't a company that's trying to make itself look good to its stockholders uh-huh. to generate profit and then have it turn into vaporware. Musk uh-huh. doesn't announce anything uh-huh. unless he's committed to doing it. And think about it. Every single project that he's made a major announcement about, okay, he's yep. brought into a functioning – so yes, SpaceX, it, SpaceX yep. and their amazing developments – uh, obviously Tesla, boring companies working on all new tech. This guy does not. St- I don't know when he sleeps. Well, like, now he's got the he's got the well he's got the Tesla batteries. He's got the uh, the, the power cells. Uh, yeah, the solar the solar the solar the solar uh, shingles. Yes. So it's not like actual solar cells. It's an entire an entire matrix of individually linked solar cells. So if one has shade on it, all the rest will still work. So you can just replace your entire roof with solar shingles and power your house. And what's awesome about this is the infrastructure that he's already been building for years. uh, You know what I mean? And the applications here with SpaceX, like I can see this coming, you know what I mean? Into actuality. It's a lot of satellites though, to, to, to put up in that short period of time. But well, they there are launch, low orbit, like you mentioned. Eight, if they can launch 800 satellites every cut. Co- well, here, here's where this this is kind of where the rub is. and Because I've been reading up on this because this, this became very interesting to me. As someone who part of the reason they don't live more rural than they do is it's the internet. internet. Like I, I would, would live like further live, out. If I would be happy to live suck. a couple miles out of town. Yep. If I could get high speed internet. Actual high speed internet, and that five meg bullcrap. Yeah. Um. So so he's having to work with. Um, golly darn it! I can't remember who it is, but whoever it is that regulates the launching of commercial space flights, uh, it's not NASA. It's someone else. Department of whatever. Department of Space. 
We'll call it that. The okay. U.S. Department of Space Exploration. Sure. We'll call it Doze. I'm looking. Um, but uh, he's been working with them because there's a, a limited number of flights you're allowed a year from a commercial standpoint right now. And so if he can get that waived because those are antiquated regulations from six, seven years ago, if he can get that changed, then they can be launching SpaceX rockets, you know, day after day after day after day. And it's not, you know, you launch, you have seven rockets and they're reusable rockets. You know, you can launch seven rockets a week, spend however long getting them refurbed and let's say a month, let's say six months. You can launch seven rockets every six months, you know, you can probably get them up there pretty quick. Yeah. This uh, article that I'm looking at uh, says that uh, if the satellites lasted five to 10 years and the 30 billion a year uh, revenue figure was correct, um, then the satellite network uh, would be able to support 100 to 200 launches per year by itself. Yeah. And it's, uh, and this is interesting breakdown. So, they estimate that the CAW and KU plan would cost uh, at least $10 billion, and the V-band satellites and launches would cost another 20 wow. Tesla is already valued at $50 billion. Right. So if the Model 3 launch is successful, then Tesla will be selling an additional 500,000 cars per year by 2019, which would make by 2025 they could achieve 2 to 5 million cars per year, and that yep. would put their valuation at about six. Hundred billion dollars at that point. So it'd be a drop. It, well, not a drop in the bucket, but five percent of their income a year would go towards this. And what's great about this is this is not some like, uh, like I just I love to hate on Verizon. I, I'll get to that in a second. But Verizon, <laughs> Comcast, MediaCom, all the big cable companies. This isn't some self-aggrandizing BS meant to put fat pockets in their executives yeah. and buy them their seventh or eighth home. He's looking to put internet around the world in places that no one's ever heard of it. He's looking right. to legitimately build a network and he's not the first one to do this. Okay. Uh, Facebook has been working on a program now for uh, seven years. Uh, Google's uh, loon project loon, which was putting a, uh, uh, balloons up in the air to yep. do these are all been endeavors to try to get uh, internet to uh, third world countries and areas that don't have it but they're small in scope and none of them have come to fruition in a serviceable way and it almost seems like they end up being back burner uh you know options yeah. uh mark uh, zuckerberg's plan for facebook uh that is a over a long uh arcing uh, period of time you know what i mean they've got a plan for development yeah so I mean, this is super aggressive. Well, and, and what I'm what I'm reading is that um, Musk has already been working on the satellite internet project for at least two years, and SpaceX has already received a billion dollars in funding from Google and Fidelity Investments. Oh, in that January doesn't shock me. To support the manufacturing and space transport of the satellites to get this up and going. Yeah. So not only is it Musk backing this google is interested in backing this as well i was just gonna say if this if there this gets any traction at all i can totally see facebook and google putting massive amounts of money into this oh, yeah tons and of that's gas, because but... for them this is a gold mine if they can yeah. help get this up and running this gets their services expands to their everyone. access to the entire planet so this is exactly big. this is big yeah. that's cool yeah it, it's an exciting, exciting time, man. It's very neat. It's one of the things that Elon Musk is doing is, that is great. That Keep makes it him up, realize, Tony Stark. Start. Exactly. <laughs> um, and then, you know, onto the... So, we'll be able to use Elon Musk's satellite gigabit service to watch all the trailers on YouTube. Yes, uh, anywhere the, in the world. Even, even in Kansas. One that dropped today. <laughs> yeah, even in Kansas. Uh, the Dark Shower trailer dropped today oh yeah uh and i know our buddy andrew over at flick freaks is a huge huge fan of the dark tower series um it is in my audible playlist but i have to finish american gods before i need to finish a book before i start the next book and i need to finish american gods before i start uh reading the dark tower and i wouldn't even call andrew a fan at this point it's I would, his favorite thing in pop culture uh, he i would call it I'd call him a zealot He's yes. read the Dark Tower series, all the books, seven times now. 
And he has on numerous occasions said it's his literally his favoritest favorite thing of all things. He loves it more yes. than he loves anything else. Even talking about getting a dark tower tattoo on his back now, if I'm not mistaken, uh, he's already planned it. Yeah, he's already got yeah. everything drawn out, and I'm supposed to film it next Wednesday. Oh, yeah, that it's wow. no, that's happening. So, that's happening. So it's on, son. Yeah, it's happening. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay then. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, this is kind of a big, and the thing is, this is actually big for not just Andrew, but for a ton of people, because yes. King's yeah. properties have a religious following, and this is one of like the sacred properties of Stephen King's that's not been touched till now, and right. so um, there's a lot of uh, I don't know, there's a lot of anticipation. They're not trying to squeeze the whole series into one movie, are they? Is this this is going is this is going to be a series of movies, correct? This should be a series of movies. I haven't heard anything about. There's no way to fit it all into a single movie. No way. Um, I'm just now looking to see uh, any reference. So if, while Chris looks that up, so the movie stars uh, two of my favorite actors. So Idris Elba plays oh, the gunslinger. Yeah. And uh, Matthew McConaughey uh, uh, plays McConaughey Walter songs, Odin. Dude. Uh, yeah, uh, Walter Odin uh, or yep. the Man in Black. And the concept behind the Dark Tower, Tower series, for those who haven't read it, is um, uh, the Dark Tower is this sort of like this gateway, but it's not just a gateway. Or, uh, uh, it's a pillar supported by these beams, these mystical beams that that is sort of like the anchor for many worlds, a metaverse, uh, so to speak. And uh, in Idris Ilba's world, uh, he's part of a class of people known as gunslingers. They're the defenders of, and he's the last of his kind. And Walter Odom is the man in black who just, he's, he's that guy who wants to watch the world burn. And so, um, uh, not to go too deep into the story, but Jake is this kid um, who sees beyond his world. And, uh, he ends up in, uh, he ends up in, in Idris's world and the gunslinger and the boy, uh, go on this mission to stop the man in black before he gets to the dark tower to destroy it. Um, and so, uh, it's, uh, the trailer looks super, super, super good. Uh, if you watch yeah. it as an outsider, um, however, uh, and keep in mind, I haven't read the books. I'm going off of descriptions. So I apologize if I screwed any of that up and feel free to correct me. Um, tweet us, but I'm sure Andrew will Andrew, uh, he, he did a live stream, uh, this morning that was phenomenal. And he talked about the things he had issue with. Um, I guess Roland Deshane, uh, which is, uh, Idris' character, the gunslinger, Roland Deshane. Um, he looks amazing. He's got this kick-ass duster and this dope vest on. And apparently yeah. the character in the book is uh, apparently he's been, he's been doing this a thousand years. So yeah. like his clothes are tattered as crap and he's constantly having to repair them just so that he's got something to wear in the book. So he takes a lot of issue with the presentation of him. Um, yeah. but he says that they got the gunslinging part. He says from the trailer, perfect. That dope yeah. scene where he's like reloading, on oh, the speed like with his thumb. Him in with his thumb. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Um, and the oh, way he, he has a, throws him up in the air. Yep, in the air and he catches him. him and, oh. and his marksmanship skills. Andrew's like, right. dude, that's straight out of the book. He's he's uh, the, the way he's described in the book, uh, according to Andrew, is like, if if you could imagine the ultimate marksman ever in all of history, and then make him even better, that's what the gunslinger is. He's this. He's this unstoppable force. Uh, right. And this is some dope stuff. I did not know this, and this is cool. Those pistols he carries, the metal from that they're made out of is actually cast from Excalibur. Okay, that's cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited <laughs> to read these books. Yeah, so uh, I'm excited to see this. little interesting side note for you. There is also a TV show in the works that it's going that it is going to include Idris Elba. Oh. And it'll explore his backstory. Okay. So it's going to be based more on the first book and have parts of the fourth book, Wizard and Glass, along with it. Okay. That's so, kind of cool. The, so there's going to be the movie and then the TV show is going to fill in the backstory leading up like with the with the movie. So you'll see the movie and then get the prequel on TV. That's awesome. Which well, is kind of cool. Which I bet money it's going to be on Hulu because it seems like all the Stephen King stuff's going to Hulu. So maybe there's something to that. 
eh, maybe I'll actually, you know, resubscribe to Hulu. Um, the other trailer that came out, though. Oh, yeah. I got geeked up watching this trailer. And that was uh, that was Marvel's The Defenders. Oh, it's so good. Um, so you have everybody's uh, three favorite Marvel TV characters and Iron Fist. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you went there. And you, a, like, and a trailer legit together. went there. Um, look, okay. Can I, okay. I, I have been, I finally bit the bullet and started watching Iron Fist. And I feel like it was a rushed project. Yes. They needed to get uh, it out before. They had to get it out. out. And I don't yep. think, I, I feel bad for the guy that's playing Danny Rand. I can't think of his name all of a sudden. Um, but you could tell he oh, was Finn Jones. Finn. Yeah. yeah. Finn Jones. You could tell he wasn't in like a hundred percent shape to do a Kung Fu show. They didn't spend enough time on the, he's even talked about there were times that they'd be rewriting the choreography the morning of the shoot. And then he'd have to try to learn the choreography right then and there. So I, I think iron fist suffered a lot from the fact that it was shoved into production but I'll say this. It's not as bad. I, I don't feel like it's as bad as people are making it out to be. It's it's, it's a, entertaining. It's a, C plus, it's a C plus B minus yes. type series. Never, Probably more C plus. Never do you say, never do you like, are you tempted to turn it off? Right. But I, you I, watch I, it and I, you I go, this is watch. not the caliber of writing. This is not the caliber yeah. of fight that I've seen from other Marvel series. And so yeah, they've set I a benchmark. Watch, I do want to watch the next episode. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not like I'm like, I'm done. It's it's the little, I think it's the little things that add up. Like yeah. the focus on the show is almost almost predominantly on the Meachin family and their yeah. drama. The whole show. Yeah. Um, Incredibly annoying. Danny Rand is that girl who's always having to tell people. Um, I'm a good person. If you have to tell people you're a good person all the time, you're not a good person. But (laughs) Danny Rand's character in the movie, the show, what he has to do is at least six times every episode, he has to tell someone I'm the immortal iron fist. And we're like, okay. Eh, And then he uses it once per episode. Cause then he has to recharge. It drains his chi, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you, didn't, if you didn't have no chi, what would you be doing? Yeah, and be he's sitting over in the corner sucking your thumb. He is. At least he's still fighting. <laughs> <laughs> he's too white bread, and I don't mean that in a white sense. I mean, he's a dork. He's, he's milk toast. He's so bland and milk yes. toast. Yes. Yeah. And I can't buy he's... him as a hero because he doesn't ever act like one. This he's constantly from, questioning. What? Scott Van Pelt from ESPN, but he's ham sandwich. <laughs> yes, that's it. He's ham sandwich. No he matter is. what you do to that sandwich to dress He'll it up, still be at ham. the end of the day, it's still just a ham sandwich. Some episodes, he's got some sprouts and like some yeah. some Grey Poupon, right? Some spicy right, mustard. Yeah, a little, little Dijon on Other there. Other episodes, it's, toast, it's literally just... a chibata roll. Yep, yeah. it's just a slice of ham and Miracle Whip, but yeah. I mean... No matter what, it's... It's a ham sandwich. Yeah, it's, it's a that's a great sandwich. analogy. It's a fine sandwich. It's just ham. But it's just a ham sandwich. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I. but saying that, it was funny when Luke, the, the, this trailer was was pitch perfect. Everything, oh, yeah. everything about it was great. You know, it opens with, with walking through the four characters, three of which everyone likes, and then Iron Fist. Um, and And I'll say this. It looked, and, and I'm, I'm going to, I'm trying to give some props to Finn Jones here. It looks like he has slimmed down since he was, like, it looks like he's in better physical condition. He's toned. For the defenders. Yeah. Than he was for Iron Fist. I hope. Um, the choreography, including him, looked much better than than it oh. did Iron Fist. But that Matt Murdock. But dude, <sighs> I, I agree. I, th- I think. I think Matt Murdock. I, I can't think of the. I can't think of his name. All of a sudden, I'm having a hard time. Charlie Cox. Thank you. Yeah. I'm having a hard time remembering everyone's name. Charlie Cox stole the show the second he walked into the interrogation room and said, "Jessica Jones, stop talking. I'm your lawyer." Or <laughs> I'm Matt Murdock and I'm your lawyer. It's so good. He is. Now, he, you know, I I don't know if it's because. Um, because there's not that much footage of him in this trailer. I think it's because he's so 
good as Daredevil. And I remember yeah. I remember when you and I talked when we found out he was cast as Daredevil and we were like mm. yeah. and yeah. oh my god and he is so great. freaking good yeah. and we've been itching for more. And so to see yeah. him walk in there, uh, to see him open that case with the with the outfit in it and yeah. then to see that hallway well, scene, I'm just like oh, yes. And there, there's some funny quips, you know, like when she says, you look like an idiot. And he's like, well, it's your scar. His wit, dude. I mean, his wit is so fantastic. But, but there's a lot to there's a lot to it to, to enjoy. I think seeing the coming together of them um, is going to be cool. Yep. I, I love I mean, how they don't seem to like each other when they first meet each other. No, you know? it, it, look, okay. there's animosity. I, I'll They're get to that familiar. in just a quick. Uh, well, you know, I'll go ahead and roll into that. There's gonna it, it's going to be just like the Avengers. Okay. But without flying around. Okay. They're going to hate each other at the beginning. There will be an inciting event. They will all come together to save the day. Booyah. That's what's going to happen. Gotcha. It's either going to be someone's going to die, either stick or the theory I'm hearing that a lot of people are kind of throwing around is that Rosario Dawson's going to get killed. Because she's the only one that really has a relationship with all four of them. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, uh, we kind of hadn't touched on uh, what we're looking at here. So we've got, yeah. so you've got Luke Cage, we've got Jessica yep. Jones, we yep. have uh, Danny Rand or, or Iron yep. Fist, okay? And of course, we've got Matt Murdock as Daredevil. Yep. Um, Stick comes back, okay? Yep. We've got Rosario Dawson as uh, Nurse... Uh, Claire... Claire... Nurse Claire, okay, yeah, the night and nurse. what's great is the night nurse. She's the only, she's the character that's the thread between all these people. Yes. Um, and then we've got a new then, villain played by will, Sigourney Weaver, right? Uh, and named she will be awesome. Yeah, I love Sigourney Weaver. She's a force to be reckoned with on screen, and we don't we don't know anything about her uh, as, or her character or what she Claire represents. Temple. <laughs> Claire Temple. Yes. Claire Temple. Yeah. Uh, Colleen Wing's in it, uh, so yep. she comes back from Iron Fist. Uh, yeah, the only thing listed, uh, Electra's coming back. The hand, it looks like the hand from the trailer. The hand is raising her from the dead. Um, Foggy's in it. Misty Knight's in it. It's interesting here. I'm sitting here looking at the IMDb. Mm -hmm. and Rosario Dawson's only in six episodes. Mm. So it makes you wonder. Um, and I know that's just me going, Oh, I, maybe it was right. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's, it's very interesting. You got to watch this trailer. If you're a fan of any oh, of these Marvel shows, so what you good. need to do is watch this trailer. I'm sitting here and go through it and watch it and then watch it yep. again and then watch, and it then again, watch it again and then yep. go through and put it on pause and drag the slider so you can go scene by scene and look at each element. There uh -huh. is so much stuff packed into this trailer. So remember the pit that uh, Matt and Electra were looking into uh, yep. in the middle of the city? So obviously we've got this new complex that's going up that they're fighting in um, from the teaser, which was, uh, if you notice, uh, this doctor, uh, where is it here? Um, there's so much little stuff. So we know there's this new complex, which is supposed to be uh, where the hand is. That pit yep. is obviously where the hand was going to set up their new base. Um, there are, there's, there's all these little things that tie into um, uh, Luke is back in Seagate. And like, how yeah, does he get he was, out? Yeah, yeah, he was getting arrested at the at the yep. end of the series. It's Charlie, and who's the chick in the coffin? Because that's not Electra. That was Electra. Was it in Electra? the red? In the red? Oh, okay, yeah, that's Electra. Uh, I just, mean, I know it's, it's not Jennifer Garner. I know, but that's. <laughs> thank God, I love you, Jen. But, <laughs> but yeah, um, it, was, it was a load of young. It was Electra. Yeah, there's just there's so much stuff in here that's just amazing. Um, yeah. I, I can't wait to see this whole introduction between Danny and Luke, um, or, uh, between Luke Cage and Iron Fist. Uh, yeah. that looks like it's going to be one of the fun mechanics of the show. Well, that's, it's, it's funny that you say that because I mean, I know I'm a little more comic nerdy than you are. Yeah. Uh, but they have their, they used to have their own series. I'm not sure if it's still running now, but Iron Fist and Luke Cage really were, were a team. It was, uh, Iron Fist and Power Man, Heroes for Hire. And they were essentially like <laughs> local mercenaries. That's dope. Um, so it is, it's going to be real interesting. Because they're both a couple there. of do-gooders. That makes yeah, sense. 
it's going to be really interesting to see what they're because they're going to have to have some kind of dynamic. Yeah. Because but their personalities are is another polar opposites other than the exactly. do gooder side. Yeah. Exactly. I would love to see them spin it off again, and there be a heroes for hire. Five that or would six be cool. Yeah, that would be cool. Because uh, they're all about keeping it safe and all that. But man, it's, it's so exciting. Just so exciting yeah, to this, see. This trailer is badass. You must watch it, folks. Check it out. It looks yeah. so good. Yeah, so much to see. I'm excited to see that Stick is coming back. Um, I do, I do really, really, really enjoy Scott Glenn as Stick. Um, um, man, it's just awesome. Yeah, I'm glad to see Everybody's him coming back. back. I do Dude, like Scott Glenn. Aaron Page is going to be in it. Jerry, Jerry Hogarth's back in it. Foggy's in it. I mean, dude, everybody's in it. Did you watch the teaser? Um, yeah, when they were in the elevator. Yeah, did you the look elevator. at it, though? Uh, no. Okay, so if you watch uh, the moment when Jessica punches the camera, okay, uh-huh. and she knocks it out, and you'll notice, uh, I'm trying to get back to that point again, in the trailer, if you watch, right when she hits it, it's 8 18 2017 is the time code on the clock. Uh, that's so funny. August 18th, 2017. Yeah, that's when the show's coming out. And also the camera inexplicably in that it pl- displays an IP in the corner. If you go to that IP, um, it actually brings up a newspaper for all of these universes put together. So that's funny. Guys go to 23.253.120.81. Um, it takes you and there's what's cool is there's these little stories that are tying all these things together. Um, and so Say that to me again real quick. 23.253.120.81. Uh-huh. 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 Thank you. Yep. And it's, it's so cool because you've got the stories about... The New York about, Bulletin. Yes. Oh, it's the actual... It's the newspaper. It's the New York Bulletin. That's yeah. awesome. And so you've got Ward Meacham still being... There, there's a ton of like little... little. Uh, Dude, there's there's an advertisement for the Shikara Dojo. Yes. Oh, it gets better. So if you oh look at gosh, each of the, the covers of down in the bottom... Yeah. Oh, they added stuff. There's new stuff on here that wasn't there before. Covers ar- There's a covers archive. So if you look down at the bottom, there's the New York Bolton. It shows uh, the ground shaking, groundbreaking of Midland Circle rise to new new heights. They're constructing yeah. over that pit that Electra and Daredevil found. Uh-huh. Well, if you look, uh, crackpot scientist seeks lost city. So I'm wondering, yeah. is he looking for uh, Kunlun? Uh, Kunlun. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then also uh, we see Ward is still all up in charge. Um, yeah. in the, in that teaser trailer, that, um, the elevator they're in, it says Midland circle heights, uh, in oh, it. Yeah. so that they might, and if you notice they're going down, so right. they, they may have infiltrated from the roof, you know, and they're headed their way right. down. There's just all this stuff starts to tie together, uh, in the, when you see these little s- sneaky <laughs> Easter eggs they put in here. Dude, you gotta you gotta click on the advertisement for the Chikara Dojo. It takes you to the wingway.com and there's a uh, there's a promo. Oh my video god, to sign dude, up that is dope. Like a crappy local TV cable, like a local cable commercial. commercial. Yep. Yeah. Build self confidence and self esteem. The wingway.com. The Are testimonials. Yes. Claire Dojo. I'm glad I found this dojo. <laughs> the best school <laughs> in Chinatown. Oh my god. Oh, it's this is so, so great. Good. So I figured you'd oh, get okay. a kick out of that. Yes, dude. I'm so glad that. So, the easier way to find it is nybulletin.com. Uh, nybulletin.com. Nybulletin.com. But it's fun uh, to follow the the, the breadcrumbs. It is fun folks. to find. It is fun to follow the breadcrumbs. But for those of you that are looking for the easy way to find it, it's <laughs> nybulletin.com. There you go. Um, anything else you want to talk about tonight? Oh, we're gonna go see Guardians this weekend. Oh, I'm so freaking excited, dude. Um, uh, beyond any excited. Pr- any predictions? Huh? It's going to kill. It's going to kill right. at the box it's gonna office. It's going to be awesome. Yep. It's going to be I'm, awesome. I'm super, honestly, I'm <laughs> super stoked to watch and find out. Uh, I want to see baby Groot, dude. I, right. this trailer has me so hyped for him. It's literally the biggest thing I care about. Yeah, it is. Baby I'm like, Groot. I want to see baby Groot tearing some. Yep.